Well, even if only people who think that trench coats are still cool ask for this, let's talk about it. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for The Matrix Resurrections, the sequel that no one really kind of expected to happen, but did. This is brought to us by Lana Wachowski, only one of them. That might already be a telltale sign. Neo and Trinity return to the world of The Matrix in a film that actually does give you a good run for your money for the first little bit, then relies possibly a little bit too much on its own nostalgia, own meta-ness, and then kind of comes out at the end going, maybe there might be more, maybe there might not be, depends on how people receive this, depends on how people view this. The Matrix Resurrections is honestly, I feel, a film that is 100% trying to take advantage of the whole kind of nostalgia meta factor that is definitely going on in media today. You see it in films like the Halloween sequels that are happening right now, you see it in films like Spider-Man No Way Home, you see it in a bunch of other different forms of media really relying off of the nostalgia, the things that were popular, the things that made money, the things that were cult favorites before, but the idea of what made them popular isn't because they made money, it's because of the influence that they had, the ideas that they brought to the table, the cinematography, the fight choreography, the iconic nature, and the whole looking in deeper is what made The Matrix so popular. It wasn't just because that it was weird and that it made money. And I feel that the Wachowski, or at least Lana, having well done proven this with the last few films she made, especially The Jupiter Ascending, I think that all that muster, all that originality is just gone. And you feel that through every single minute of this film once it gets into the Matrix nature that you know. The film does have a cool premise of what is actually happening for the first while, but then it kind of feels like the Value Village version of the Matrix movies that you know. The Cliff Notes, grade school version, and that's not just only in terms of how the dialogue and the narrative progress, but also in terms of how everything looks. Everything's really clean, everything's really clean cut. There's not that horrifying dystopian, this is the world now, so you might as well get used to being fucked atmosphere and visual style that the original films does. Did, dum-dum. Because they do dip into those visual representations throughout this film, and it looks too clean. I don't understand really how else to say it. But speaking of things that are clean, there is something that is definitely not. And just before I start, I'm going to show you this clip here from the first movie. Notice how you can see everything that's happening. Notice how you can really tell the moves. You can see that it's the actors doing these things. Sure, there might be some wire work here and there, some slow motion, but you can really see what they're doing, right? Now, uh, you know the Bourne movies or any kind of other generic action movie that you can't see shit because the camera's shaking too much? That's what Matrix Resurrections does. They don't do anything in a similar mindset to how the fight scenes are projected, how they're displayed, how they're choreographed. There might be some cool choreography going on here, but I couldn't tell you because I can't see shit. There's a fight on a train that a lot of people have talked about. There's a lot of visual elements that you can't tell what's going on. It really detriments the film. It's a part that really sticks with me in terms of the Matrix films. People talk about the stories or the characters or the clothing and whatnot, but the thing that I remember the Matrix for first and foremost are the goddamn fight scenes. And when you fight fuck up. The main reason why I'm watching your movie, you done fucked up, bro. Is there some granted reason to watch this movie? Sure. Neil Patrick Harris is a really cool and intriguing character. I do like the reasons why there is a new Morpheus and a new Smith. These attempts at trying to rely off of what made The Matrix so popular back in the day, but I also feel like the idea of what was the driving force behind them, the animes, and the other uh, kind of Chinese, Japanese action films that they base themselves on, they instead rely off of generic American action movies. The movies that try to emulate The Matrix are now, some of them are better than this movie is in terms of how it just portrays itself. You might get some woos because there is a little bit of few callbacks here and there to characters throughout the trilogy. You might have fun with that. I went into this film with very low expectations and I came out feeling exactly how I think I thought I would. So I wasn't disappointed, I was just more so... Eh. So if you're a fan of the Matrix trilogy, I apologize if you like this movie. If you did, good for you, fine by you. It just did not work with me. It did not hit the notes that it should have. It relied too much of its own nostalgia 
in a way that it detrimented itself. It did not rely off of enough of a new thing. Instead, it would try to come up with this really kind of hokey story. There's a bunch of dialogue that they just throw in weird science words. They're just kind of throwing them in for the dialogue to sound smart, but it doesn't help. I feel that everyone in this film definitely had a fun time with it. I think it was cool to see these characters again. I do like Neo's story for the first bit. But then once everything kind of comes together, you're kind of just very disappointed. So in the end, I'm going to give Matrix Resurrections a 2 out of 7. Anyways, guys, that's it. That's probably the last movie I might see in theaters. BC just went and put in this new lockdown restriction. I'm going to find that out essentially tomorrow. But I might try and see The Kingsman. I want to see Nightmare Alley before the new year, but we'll see. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Tell me what you guys thought about this movie. Did you see it yet? What did you think about it? What do you like about the original trilogy? I know we already did a review series of the original three, but if you guys want to talk about them more, or if you want to see those reviews, there will be at the end of this video. Anyways, that's all from me, guys. See you next time.